What's up everybody, Bradley Jack Design here with another design breakdown and as you can tell we're talking about the Chicago Bears today. So here we have a David Montgomery graphic that I created so I'm going to hop right in here and show you what it took to create this graphic. So I've got everything organized here on the right that we can see so I'm going to turn everything off and we're going to start from the back and work our way to the front. So every design I make starts with some sort of background. This one's pretty simple. It's a photo of Soldier Field that I took that I have uh, straight from the side really nice and symmetrical and on top of that I have a photo filter and I'll show you why in a second I have some clouds in the background so you can see these clouds are very warm it's a very warm um, sky with the lighting this is super cold so to make it look like it's more natural I have a photo filter on here um, you can go to adjustments photo filter I went ahead and just selected this color and then basically selected a color from the clouds to warm up this front photo so it matches. In front of that I have some fog. So I've got this image of some fog. Take a look at it here. I went ahead and used a levels layer to get rid of some of the edges. I used a color lookup called candlelight to have it match the background here. I probably could have used the same photo filter so the color matched but I like how this candlelight color lookup looks. Then on top of that I have another levels layer where I got rid of some of the edges again. So we've got some fog in the background as texture. I then have this additional photo of, or additional first photo of David Montgomery here in the background. Just a nice photo of him running with the ball. Um, if you want to learn how to edit a photo like this, uh, check out my other YouTube video on how I edit images in Lightroom and then take them into Photoshop to do some more edits. You'll be able to get an effect like this. I went ahead and just masked out basically the bottom of him so it blended nicely into the background. And then on top of that, I've got some grass. I generally like to put my own grass into, into scenes. The grass here was sort of boring. This one's more dynamic and exciting. And as you can see, all I have is just this photo of a stadium that I masked out underneath this road here. And then I went ahead and have that same photo filter I used on the stadium I used on here so it matches. So if I turn that photo filter off, you can see how green and blue the grass is, but when I add it back in, it warms it up a lot, adds a little bit more orange and yellow to it. In front of David Montgomery then, I have some fog. So this, this is the same image just flipped. There's fog coming in on the left and fog coming in on the right. For each of these, I turned it black and white with a gradient map. I used the color lookup candlelight like I did before on the other fog. And then I used a levels layer to get rid of the edges as well by just moving the left black slider over to the right until you start seeing this part of the histogram. And then I just mask that so you could see some of the grass below here. In front of this I have a photo of David Montgomery. So this is a photo that I found. Use the same editing technique as the one in the background. Use the same clipping technique uh, using the quick select. If you want to learn how to do that, check out my other YouTube video on how to clip out an athlete without using the pen tool. Um, so we've got this photo of David Montgomery. I have the background of him masked to just to where his shadow is um, with a couple gradient maps on top of that. Let me turn one of these off, turn it back on. So this must be super drastic because I can barely see it. Still can't see it. There it is. Yeah, that looks better. It's like I accidentally added another gradient map I didn't mean to. Yeah, so we can see his actual shadow down here now. And then on the David Montgomery image here, I used the blur gallery and I used a path blur. And let me open this up, see how long this takes to do. What the path blur allows you to do is it allows you to draw multiple lines and it'll blur the object based on that path. So hypothetically, his leg would be swinging this way, his knee would be, you know, maybe planting this way and then his arm would be swinging up because he's getting ready to run. So I went ahead and drew these out. I have it set to just a speed of 25%. And then I went ahead and if it's a smart object with a smart filter, you can mask out filters. So I basically masked out his whole body except for certain areas I wanted the mask to show through. It's just a little bit on his knee, a little bit on his leg here and then on his arm. So I do that a lot to uh, convey motion. It's subtle, but it looks nice. So in front of David Montgomery, I have some more fog. So I've got some fog on the top here just to keep the fog motif going. 
Um, I believe it's the same fog that I used in the background. Um, looks like I've got two separate images here. They're both set to screen. The other fog's set to screen as well. It's important to know. Um, I've got a luminosity layer on here to uh, gradient map set to luminosity. So I moved in some of these values to manipulate what the fog looked like. So if I move this out, it's going to brighten it up. If I move it in, it's going to darken it. I can barely, barely tell what this is doing. Here it is. So it's on the one on the right. So the more you move the black in, the further away the fog goes. The more it out, the more you move it to the left, the more that the, sh the fog is going to show up. Let me hit cancel. On top of that, I've got the candlelight uh, color lookup that we used before. I have the same thing on both of these, and then a levels layer to get rid of some of the edges like we have here. So then on top of this, I've got a two little dust layers just to add some a uh, little bit of texture and dust on the top. So I've got one on the top and then one at the bottom here you can see. In the bottom right I've got some dust. So this is a pretty good solid design overall. Then I've got this folder with a bunch of final edits I made. So let me turn all of these off. So first what I did was I saved this out. Saved this as a file. Threw it into a new file with just the PSD file. And I used a couple of filters. So this is the normal one. I used the lens correction filter. And then on the other one, I used radio blur. So what I did was, if I turn this off, you can see here's a normal image. So what I did was I turned it on. And this is what it did. So let me open up the lens correction. So in this, this is what you would use to fix like a photo you took of a building to make sure everything lined up. I'm using it in a way to give me some effects on the edges and distort the image a bit. So I'm removing distortion of plus 10. So it's basically bowing it, you can see here. It's bowing the edges outward. And then I have on here chromatic aberration. So when you take a photo of something, Sometimes the cyan or the green and magenta, there might be a little bit of a fringe depending on how you took the photo. Now I blew these out because I want an effect of sort of a distortion on the edge, but not something that's too dramatic. So if I zoom in here, hypothetically, there we go. So you can see how there's like yellow here, there's purple here, there's a little bit of glitchiness around the edges. If I turn that lens correction off, it's just grass and normal. But if I turn it on, you can see where it's distorting around here and giving a cool distortion effect. So I have that one on here. Then I, have a, I duplicated that layer um, and added a radial blur set to, uh, what is this set to? Not set to spin, set to zoom, and I have it set to four. I have it at best quality. And that basically is gonna give me just a little bit of a blur going around the edges almost as if the camera's zooming in on him. And I blurred out everything except for the main subject here in the middle. So if I turn this off and turn this on, you can see the effect that it's having. And I kept this back layer because we wanted the back layer with the lens correction distortion we've got going on, but we've got the top layer where we wanted to mask out um, a lot of the area we didn't want to blur. So. That's what I've been doing recently on a couple of my designs to add a little bit of flair at the end of the design. Then on top of this, I've got this nice lens dirt to add more depth to the image. And then I have some color lookups. So these color lookups really drastically change what the image looks like. So the first one I have is 2395, which I use on a lot of my designs. That's set to 100%, so that does this. Uh, the next color lookup I've got, teal orange plus contrast. So that'll, basically what that does is it boosts the oranges and teals to make it look more cinematic. Um, and I have that set to 25%, so it just does a little bit of tweaking to it. I've got a curves layer on here to brighten up the top. The top end highlights brightens those up just a little bit. And then I have a foggy night color lookup set to 
that just adds this sort of filter to it. So I like using these filters on my designs just because it glues everything together. So you're looking at it through one lens instead of having things um, don't look like, you know, they're not meshed together, you know, colors look different, stuff like that. So then on top of all of this, I just have my watermark at the bottom with the Bears logo. Um, and that's the design here. So really what it is, is, you know, sourcing a couple images to make a background. So this, in this instance, soldier field, a sky, some grass, finding a nice image to use. So I found the, these really nice images of David Montgomery that I was able to use. Threw them in there. I've got some size contrast where I've got one huge and one smaller. And those are the main aspects of the design. I've got some color lookups to glue everything together. I've got some fog in here as texture. I have some depth with these dust and lens overlays that I have. Um, and then I've got this blur and lens correction that is basically guiding the viewer to look at the center of my design and look at it dead in the middle. So uh, I hope you guys got something from this. I know I haven't talked about the lens correction. I'm sure a lot of people are probably going to start using that. I hope you guys do. Um, if you guys have any suggestions for any design you've seen on my YouTube or on my Instagram page that you want me to do a breakdown of, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, go ahead and do that at Bradley Jack Design. Um, other than that, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks.